Welcome to this edition of Great Books, a lively discussion of a selection from the canon of exceptional literature. Here's your host, Jack Hatfield. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for the Great Books Show. I'm Jack Hatfield. Our panel meets periodically to discuss great works of classic and modern literature. Dave will introduce our selection for today, a short story by Vladimir Nabokov. Today's selection is the short story, Symbols and Signs, by one of the modern masters of English prose, the Russian-American writer Vladimir Nabokov, or as Americans say, Vladimir Nabokov. Nabokov was born in 1899 in St. Petersburg to a wealthy family of Russian aristocrats. Nabokov's father was a government official who was assassinated for being on the wrong side of the Bolshevik Revolution. It was at this point that Nabokov began his life as a refugee in England and Germany and elsewhere. In 1940, he came to the U.S. to teach literature at Wellesley and at Cornell. Nabokov had already written nine novels in Russian before beginning to write in English in 1941. His best-known novel was Lolita, written in 1955. Due to the success of Lolita, Nabokov was able to move one last time in 1961 to Montreux, Switzerland, where he died in 1977. Nabokov's writing is rich in lyricism, clever wordplay, and often includes a recurring theme of refugee-type characters, characters who stand apart from the dominant culture. The story Symbols and Signs first appeared in The New Yorker in 1948. In this short, five-page short story, an old Russian couple transplanted to New York prepares to visit their son, who is incurably deranged in his mind for his birthday. Their son, whose name may or may not be Charlie, appears to suffer from a referential mania in which every inanimate thing that exists around him appears to refer to him. The couple doesn't end up seeing their son. The doctors at the sanitarium say their visit would be inadvisable so soon after his latest suicide attempt. They go home and resolve to keep him at home. And that's pretty much the whole plot, except for some odd phone calls late at night. The compactness of the story seems to form a neat package, but the meaning appears elusive. What are the symbols and signs of the title? How do they affect the couple, their son, and the reader? What has been resolved at the end of the story? The first question would be uh, how the title, Symbols and Signs, relates to the story itself. Does anyone want to take a shot at that? Well, the, the most obvious, at the most obvious level, the son who has the referential mania um, sees, um, sees the events, uh, the things around him, inanimate objects or uh, non-living objects, um, as, their, as, as, being symbi- as, as being signs of um, uh, their actions being, being signs, hidden, hidden signs, basically. So there was a, there's a level of... Um, well, he Same. states that pretty explicitly right there. That's, that's right there in front of you. Where's, everything um, is a cipher. Every, everything, everything is a cipher. Everything, everything is a is cipher. Omen, everything means something. Everything means something okay. else. But, yeah. but that's We're the not. given of the um, syndrome that this kid suffers from. But are there other symbols and signs um, apparent to, to the parents or apparent to you? Well, the the parents, the parents. Um, it, somewhere in the story, it says that a doctor wrote a paper which he gave to the um, which he gave to the parents. But they had already basically sussed out most of what was in the paper, in the sense that they had seen signs uh, over the over the course of this kid's life that something wasn't right with him. And then at some point, uh, they finally had to had to face up to they the fact noticed, that he was mentally deranged. They had, they had noticed his odd behavior, and detected that something was wrong, but. Is that a sign um, that's being referred to in the title? Is that one of the signs that the title refers to? I don't know. It's a sign. I think the there's mo- the, many the signs. Even when he, he sets up the, the stage of what's happening, I mean, it's raining, okay? And then you talk about people crying and the tears and, 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 the, cry, and the rain sort of locked together. And in one part of the story, he talks about a bird twitching. and Apparently, the bird is dying on the ground, and it's twitching in its last gasps of breath. And then the father's hand is twitching. 
And then later in the story, the father says, I'm going to die, you know? Well, there are, there are a lot of bad things that happen, or <laughs> unfortunate things, aside from the fate of the kid, but uh, the train gets stuck, uh, the father forgets his keys, it starts raining, uh, all these, all these yeah. ominous events. But when it, he says, when he describes the subway train being slow, it says the subway train lost its life current. Okay, and you're talking about a boy who just committed suicide and a or father. Tried try to. Tried to. Oh, tried to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, a, a father who says that I'm going to die. So, I am dying. So we've identified all these breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. right? We, we've named off a whole bunch of breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. So what do they add up to? Maybe nothing. And here could be a interpretation. The son has a middle outlook that, that he, he uh, uh, transfers his, his internal world onto everything, right? And it might well be that Nabokov is accusing us of doing the same thing. Is might mean absolutely nothing. It might be he's saying, here's all these breadcrumbs, really they're meaningless, but you guys are just like the sun that you're trying to read all of this so it's stuff. Like a, it's, it's like a Rorschach. It's yeah, like a, right. it's like a bunch of ink blots, yeah, and you're and yeah. you're interpreting it your, in your own way. Yeah. yeah. So we have that referential problem that the sun right. does yeah. if we <laughs> think these mean something. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's a very interesting that's take. Interesting. Why, instead of just having signs and just having symbols, what's the difference between symbols and signs? I looked it up in the dictionary, and um, you know how a dictionary lists, you know, like five or different definitions, and the first ones they mean pretty much the same thing, but then the last ones, uh, the signs uh, refer more to numbers, and the symbols refer more to to concepts and words. I don't see how that has anything to do with anything, but I just thought it was interesting. I like that too. I um, uh, yeah, I was wondering about that too. I mean, obviously he. I mean, this is a very deliberate thing on the Bokoff's part to to contrast these two. I my feel my thought was that a sign pointed pointed towards something, a symbol stood for something, and what that. <clears throat> but I'm not sure how that actually works mm -hmm. in this story. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, since he says the story is symbols and signs, so right. it's either about both of them or it has well, both I, of I them. Well, I think when you that's read a story it. called Symbols and Signs, you start hunting for symbols and signs. Mm -hmm. right. I mm -hmm. think that's natural. Mm -hmm. And we seem to have found some. And he wants us to do it because that's why he titled it Symbols Somebody and said signs. something about numbers. There's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of numbers in the, in the story. There are, there are 10 uh, jelly jars or, or 10 different jellies in 10 little jars. Um, I, I noticed that and made uh, notes for myself every time a number hmm. Occurred. Interesting. Um, and and maybe that's a breadcrumb. And if it is, what does it mean, or what do any of them mean? Yeah, I was, that's what I was going to ask you. I'll ask you. Mm -hmm. So what? So that there's a lot of numbers there. There's there's also a lot of colors um, that I've noticed. Um, she wore cheap black dresses. Um, then uh, her, her face, face was, was all pink and mauve with paint. Yeah. Um, uh, mm, mm, mm. Gray hair. But the thing I was picking up was the lack of color mm -hmm. when one woman wore the black dress and her face was pale white. Mm -hmm. And it was the neighbor who had color in her face. But the mother actually so these had are the pale little things white that faces you keep track that looked like margins. death. Yeah. Looking for clues. But what are they? So what? What do they add up to? What do they add up to? I have an opinion, but I'll say it. Okay, let's go to the very end. It ends up that uh, late at night receive uh, two phone calls. Three? Well, two that's... Yeah, this, this, two that are answered. Two, two this girl, answers yeah. That she, there's a young woman <clears throat> that says, yeah. is Charlie there? And the mother says, no, no, no. Uh, and the third one, it just ends. No one answers it. So... It's pretty ominous. 
Maybe. I, th I thought, the, uh, yeah, that actually to me struck me as ominous, even though I'm not sure why it should have, because it certainly could have been this same young woman again. Well, but, I think, uh, I, yeah. to, to, uh, okay, something becomes ominous when you assemble the clues and they point to something um, instead of random occurrences that have no relationship to one another, right? So there are things. Well, also the context. Uh, well, I yeah. mean, because this was and, a, this and the was time at night. frame. They're conspiring yeah. against you. Or something. And the language used. All this language was heavy, somber, black, mm -hmm. death-like language again and again and again. If there was a choice of a word, he would pick the the more somber one. So yeah, the uh, only it was one... ominous because of, of not only the setting but also the language that he but used throughout the whole thing. There are thing. also events that are random, like the rain, the subway. Uh, no, I, I don't think they're random. I don't either. No, no, no. They, they occur in nature for reasons unrelated to a conspiracy of inanimate objects. It's raining. But, but this is it a rains. story, but there's a reason why an author sets a story in a rainstorm or he makes that train well, lose I its think, life current. Well, I think it's, it's just another one of the breadcrumbs. That, he, he's uh, setting this ominous setting for us, so when we get to that last telephone call, we're afraid of what that telephone call is. We don't think it's Publishers Clearinghouse saying <laughs> a million dollars. I'm mean, I mean, calling at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, well, did, what did people think, the people who thought it was ominous, what did people think it meant? I thought it was the hospital calling to say that he, he committed dead. suicide That's again. What I thought. That he actually That could be. There's could no be. evidence. We have no, no idea. No, we have no, no idea. No. Could be right. that, it could that the son's calling he broke could have been loose. Clearing house. loose. Yeah. Could have been Ed McMahon. He, just, he, just, got the, he just got the wrong the, time. The girl. Yeah. It could, be, could the have been the girl the girl again. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's okay. it's interesting that um, the the wife said, Oh, you thought you dialed a zero, but it was an O. Where did she come up with that? I mean, that, that sounds good, but how would she just come up with that like that? If you have a telephone number that has a zero yeah. or an O in it, maybe that's but a common zero, mistake. Well, maybe they didn't slash the zero and they wrote it on the matchbook or something. Well, she, asked, she asked her what number she wanted, so maybe mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been all that difficult to, yeah. to figure out the substitution. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and in, in the olden days when this was written, a yeah, telephone number in America had, like, mine was Nightingale 6. Uh -huh. There was NI6. Right. You had letters and numbers yes. in right. your telephone number. Yes. So you, you could make yeah. that mistake. 1947, it probably wasn't seven numbers. Anyway. Or, or whatever. Not have been. That's right. There might not have been. <laughs> what okay. about the tone? It just seems to be what you were talking about. Just somber, gray. Somber. He had some great um, explanations of the way the mother looked at life that was just... Yes. Um, if anyone wants to read their kind of their favorite, uh, I don't know if I've got His one. writing is just so great that it's, it's hard to pick. I'm not sure what okay. the pa pagination is, but it's the last paragraph before the third uh, section. Okay. Um, okay. All this and much more she had accepted for, after all, living does mean accepting the loss of one joy after another. Not even joys in her case, mere possibilities of improvement. I thought that that was. Okay. That's what I had done. Yeah, How I about that Aunt Rosa? Star next to that. <laughs> but, but, but How wait. about Aunt Rosa, who had lived in a tremulous world of bad news? Oh yes. I mean, you know, there's. You don't even mention joy in there. It's just a world of bad news. It is tremulous a world. Of bad world. News I love for these people. people. Bankruptcy, bankruptcies, train accidents, and cancerous growth, growths. Until the Germans put her to death, so and we're bringing the Holocaust and everybody else that she was that she was worried about. So, right. So it all ended up being pointless anyway. Okay. The, but oh, even got, when you know, come to I got a, another red herring for you. Okay. okay. Let, let me continue what he was Go reading because I thought the last part of that was really part of what uh, Joe read was. She thought of the recurrent waves of pain that, for some reason or other, she and her husband had had to endure, of the. Invisible, the invisible giants hurting her boy in some imaginable fashion, of the incalculable amount of tenderness contained in the world, of the fate of this tenderness, which is either crushed or wasted or transformed into madness, of neglected children humming to themselves in unswept corners of beautiful weeds that cannot hide from the farmer. There can't be anything more 
powerfully um, bleak. somber, yeah, bleak, bleak and, uh, hopeless depressing. almost. Sorry, Dave. Well, um, no, the, uh, the uh, beautiful weeds that can't hide from a farmer is interesting because it's an organic growth. So it's, it's a natural thing for these things to occur, even if they're experienced as bad. They are natural phenomena. And I think that some of this uh, pessimism is, is a general view of the characters in the, in the story. It's not just something bad happens to them. They're just living in a world of bad things. But weeds are also in the eye of the beholder to some extent. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, she looked on her son as this precious boy, and mm -hmm. he wasn't looked on that way by he other people. He might be a beautiful weed. He might be an organic growth that's mm -hmm. perceived uh, differently by him. That's why they want to keep them at home, because the hospital didn't know what to do with them. The one part of this story that, to me, struck me as, as breaking through a little bit of the somberness um, was the, his description of the, at the very, very end, just before the third call. So it's in the last paragraph, and, and, he's, and the old man, the father, is putting on a spec, he puts on a spec, goes and re-examines with pleasure the luminous, I mean, luminous yellow, green, and red little jars. I could just imagine him picking these things up, and they were glowing with this pure color, and just the, the sheer pleasure that it gave him just before the, the last call. Mm -hmm. The sensuousness. Just before the last call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the only time, I think, oh, that something broke through. Only that was, five of the 10 jars are, are cited. And the last one is the crab apple, which is something the you sourest. don't normally think yeah. about. I keep wanting to say, to every time someone says something, so? <laughs> so what? <laughs> but anyway, let, let me. Uh, OK, I it, also is, read a comment that the beach plum was originally, he wrote it as B-E-E-C-H, and Buchenwald supposedly means beech wood, so it was a reference back to the Holocaust, even in oh. that part that they're talking about that. Oh. Those luminous oh. jars. So <laughs> so <laughs> because he's making it somber. He's making it ominous. He's Why? depressing us. Okay. And he, is it one thing you were saying? And is the events that happened to this family are horrendous? Is could they have reacted differently? Is it? I mean, she's obviously looking at life. No, very, they very take it as it comes, and they expect bad things, and bad right. things happen. I mean, even the escape, they got into America. Right. Wouldn't you figure that would be a good thing? No, she remembered the their, shame, uh, the pity, the humiliating difficulties of the journey, and the ugly, vicious, backward children he was with in the school he was with. Mm -hmm. And, and the I, prince that they're beholden to. The prince, yeah. Oh, you his know, brother. The, the rich relative. Yeah, yeah. There is. Whom he's totally dependent on, whom mm -hmm. the father is totally dependent on. Another humiliation. Yeah. So is it just that's that's life sucks and then you die. Okay, is that it? So it's just I, a slice of, of life sucking? I, I can't believe that. I can't either, but I it's Oh no, I, I can't don't think that's the point of it. What is the point then? I don't know, is it that time in the show? <laughs> <laughs> find something redeeming in this no, not story. Yet. <laughs> not yet. I can't find anything redeeming in this story. I, I can't find anything happy at all. There was, I'm not sure if you would call this redemptive, it's, it would be stretching it to call it redemptive, but the, but the parents' devotion to this kid, I mean, the fact that, the fact that um, you know, you can just see them making this laborious journey to see their, to see their son, um, two old people, they were quite old, he said, mm -hmm. at one point, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this was, I guess, 20 years, the son was 20 years mm -hmm. late, I guess. Um, and so they've been, and he's been strange from the beginning, and, and he's just gotten stranger. Um, but the devotion of this this family, thinking about what what we what we could what give we him, for him, what can we do for him that's not going to set him off? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right. the, there's and then uh, bringing him home, talking about bringing, him and then talking about bringing, and, him. and, and very, the very quickly, very quickly, she said, and the difficulties of having him home that someone would always be with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they right? all, it's a two room apartment. It's a two room apartment. They got they got the couch and they got a bedroom. He's going to be in the bedroom, mm -hmm. and these two shoes. old people are going to work mm -hmm. shifts. Mm -hmm. um, and then he said, the father said, we have to bring him home, otherwise we'll be responsible. Responsible for what? In the context of the story, I thought responsible if he ever commits suicide. And he could, they couldn't tolerate that. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's, if you would really count that as redemptive, but yeah. it was one positive yeah. thing You have the convinced story. me that that is a yeah. positive yeah. Yeah. thing in the story. That despite everything, they still had this love for their son and they were willing to probably martyr themselves for him. Yeah. Open the gates for us. Please. Give us your interpretation. <laughs> this, I don't know if this is authoritative, but this is what I think. I think he's fun in us, and all those breadcrumbs are for naught. 
that uh, he's fooling us into looking for meaning where there isn't, just like the, uh, the kid does, and he's laughing at us. That's what I was saying. Um, one thing to support that is um, extra text textual is that uh, Nabokov hated psychiatrists. He thought they were all quacks. Uh, he met Freud, and he thought Freud was a quack. Um, and so any uh, bizarre syndrome he would um, think was, was imaginary or explainable by other means. Um, a lot of his characters in various novels are nuts. Uh, obviously in Lolita, the, the, the child molester is, is nuts. And in his next most famous Pale Fire, uh, they're all nuts. But um, he had a very dim view of uh, psychology and psychiatry. And I think this is consistent with that. So he's but, making but fun point, of this syndrome? But the point is not, is not, this is not, I mean, that's a point. Mm -hmm. But you're saying this really has no point. No, no. I mean, that, 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 that's story... a characterization along the way, but that's not the point of this thing. That's not what we're supposed to take from it. In Maybe. fact, we're supposed to look, no, no, well, we're, I'm just wondering if that's, made, what, if that's we're what We're supposed to be made fools of, I think, uh, by searching for clues where there are none. And he provides us with some that lead nowhere, cohesively. So he sets us up by, by, by titling it Symbols and Signs. He makes a, he makes a story of tragedy right. and, of, and, 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 and of sacrifice, and it's all to laugh at us. Well, um, okay. but, but right. um, it's, he's not so much laughing at us, but laughing at psychiatry by saying that um, you can't deal with this like that. It quickly becomes absurd and meaningless and fanciful. And by taking care of him and their concern, um, they're doing the right thing. And uh, the, the hospital is obviously inept because he was saved from his other suicide attempt by another inmate and not by the staff. Um, so they want to yank him out of there because they don't know what to do for him. Um, there, there are signs in there that he thinks that. But then you're saying that it really does have a serious point. The yeah. serious point is psychiatry sucks and mm -hmm. you shouldn't. I, well, it's also, I, it's somehow also that, a, somehow a that clever just little game. Feel right. yeah, I, don't. I think it's a, also a clever little game. And you know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think. I like the point about the turning us into people with referential syndrome mm -hmm. by looking mm -hmm. for the signs. Mm -hmm. I, I like that point that you made in the beginning. I, I don't know about this point you're making now, whether I... I I th follow it. I find myself many times over reading something, over interpreting something. Mm -hmm. and then I, Is I there a Christ the, figure in there? Yeah, right. right. Yes. Yes. And uh, uh, then catching myself and saying, I, that's not really there. And I, I'm wondering if he's just warning us against over interpreting something, over reading something. Somebody wrote a whole book about this story. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's a um, collection of essays and a forum of different specialists in uh, uh, a psychiatrist, an English professor, a mathematician. Um, I, di I didn't read it, I read a page of it, but um, apparently they think there's a lot in here. Yeah, that's it. See, I didn't, I, I'm with you, I didn't take it against psychiatry because there's so little of it. Of mention of it, mm -hmm. mention yeah. of it there. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they say about the the uh, the place that he was, the hospital he was in, they, they stressed not the treatment he was getting, but it was very poorly run and and all that, and so it, it sounded like a very poor place. Place, mm -hmm. not very much money but, and. Uh, but it, I, I could see psychiatry itself. Yeah, I could see him enjoying himself, trying to figure out how to put more despondency into the story, layer upon layer upon yeah. Yeah. layer, because there's very a lot in there. Written. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it was a little game for him, and and a lot of his stuff is. Well, one thing that I I, uh, when I read it, and the first time I read it four times, five times because it was so short, but I was thinking, um, if someone with very little writing talent, say myself, took the bare bones of this and wrote it, what's the difference between that? <laughs> oh yeah, you sent that out and the uh, thing. Uh, uh, if you take the language out, there's not much you story left. Out there, yeah. Is it just language then? I mean, what's, what makes this, I mean, obviously, I enjoyed reading it in and out. And it, I am, there's a lot of artistry there. Well, it's the, same, it's the same pleasure you get out of reading Lolita. I mean, who would want to read about an old 
guy uh, seducing a, a teenage girl. What kind of thing is that? And, and that's why he did it, um, just for, uh, to, uh, to make it lyrical and uh, to make a, uh, an artistic poetic game out of it. Yeah, but if that was like for shock value too, I, th there's no shock value mm -hmm, in here. Mm -hmm. And there was certainly shock well, that was, value that was in the that, shock value that novel. novel. <laughs> Well, after the, uh, as we're looking at our last few minutes here, what, uh, what did you think of it? It was not a good story to read on a sunny, beautiful <laughs> It should be dark and rainy. Uh, yeah, it should be dark and rainy. Dave? I, I liked it. Um, it, uh, it it's, it's worth more than five pages. You, you, can, you can get a lot out of it. Joe? Yeah. Um, if Dave is, if Dave's interpretation of the of Nabal, Nabokov's or Nabokov's um, in, um, uh, intent in writing this is accurate, then I feel offended. Actually, um, I feel I feel like a okay. So I so I've been fooled. I've been fooled by this by this kind of tragic story. Is this what Nabokov really gets off on? If that's the way he is, maybe I won't read anything more about Nabokov. Well, you'll teach him. Of course, right. That's exactly <laughs> nasty right. Nasty trick. But cheap, well, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a cheap trick, but it's also a nasty trick. Yes, that's right. It is both of those things. Um, I thought the language was beautiful. I yes. thought that until I came here tonight, I thought that this was a pretty good story. <laughs> I would be so inclined sure. to be, read more of him because of what he does with his language. Oh, I really fires. love it. Oh, yeah. Very no, I've, I've read Lolita. I love the man's language. I don't don't particularly like this interpretation of the story. I, I didn't get it insulted by it, but it was like the ending. I really like symbolic sort of, you know, Ingmar Bergman, all this. He sort knows of that, thing. and it's really there. And it's in our, <laughs> but this left me kind of. With nothing. Yeah, yeah, with nothing. If you're right, there's a streak of cruelty here. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, 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 I guess, is what it, more, more that than offended, yeah. It's, it's yeah, more like I, there's a streak of cruelty. Yes, I, I didn't. Yeah, you, I didn't, didn't you, didn't, you didn't think that, yeah. And I didn't either until 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I did enjoy the language. Uh, I enjoy his other writings much more. Um, it just... But it's a good story because we have different takeaways from it. Yeah, yeah. That's Very true. different, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what makes it great literature. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time as we discuss another great selection. As Aristotle said, the best way to learn is to get together in small groups and discuss great ideas.